Hello, Akarita. How are you? Eh? Very good. Yes, all good. The cold is nice, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Akira brings you some iconic knowledge without needing a... Yes, that shorty makes you sleepy. Without needing to use a third-party tool, we'll be able to have both Windows 10 and Windows 11 all in a single file or a single ISO and practically without needing to meet the previous requirements to install them. Please join me in this video tutorial, which is going to be super cool and could be a lifesaver for more than one person. Come with me. All right, guys, for this video tutorial, we're going to need three super easy to get ingredients, okay? For this, you're going to download your Windows 10 directly from the media creation tool, and you'll also download the Windows 11 ISO directly from Microsoft's official website. Here we have it, all right? You just select it and download it, okay? Just like we already have it here. I'm going to close this now. I'll leave the direct links to the official pages down below in the video description. And of course, this works with all kinds of ISOs, whether they're official Microsoft ones or from a third party that you already have and want to merge. In my case, yes, I'm going to go to Documents where I downloaded Windows 10 22 H2. I'm going to click on Cut and move it to the local C drive directly into a folder that we'll create here. Let's name it ISOs. Yeah, just like that. Let's go in there and paste this ISO directly. I also already have the Windows 11 23H2 ISO in my downloads folder, so I'm going to cut it and move it to this directory on the local C drive, the ISOs folder we just created, and we'll put it there. What are we going to need? It's something super simple and super easy. We're going to right click on the Windows 11 ISO, select mount, and then we'll open the window right here. That's it. Now let's proceed to the sources folder and carefully look for a specific file that is named install.wim. I am going to carefully click on it right there, a deliberate click, okay? Then with a the right click, we are going to meticulously copy it and subsequently move it out of this current directory, okay? There we go. Now we have this install.wim and we're going to do exactly the same thing with Windows 10. Right click, select mount, go to sources and look for that same file, which is similar, but this one will be called install.esd. Just the same, we're going to click on it, then right click to reveal the context menu. And from there, we will select the copy option. Subsequently, we will bring this copied item over to the designated directory where we are storing all of the relevant information. All right, now we pretty much have everything we need, right? At this point, you can go ahead and eject what we mounted on your computer. No problem. Let's eject it. Okay? Just to avoid any issues, all right? It's already ejected. We no longer have any distribution. We're just left with the main files we need. All right, so what are we going to do next? Down below in the video description, I'm going to leave you two commands that we're going to keep in mind. Once we have everything ready, let's move on to the next step, which is searching for Windows, typing CMD, and running it as an administrator, okay? I'm leaving you two commands down below in the video description, which are the only things we'll need for these two builds or for these various ISOs, all right? All right, to be able to view them, first we're going to use a command that I'm leaving for you down below in the video description. Just copy and paste it, okay? And you're going to delete where it says your page, erase that part right here, and rename it exactly with the directory where all our files are located. In this case, click on the file explorer, right click, select copy, then right click again and paste. That's it, just like that. Now press Alt and 92 for a backslash, then type install.wim. And this is so it will show us all the versions contained in that install.wim. As you can see, we obviously have all the Windows 11 versions and each one has an index number. Index 1 corresponds to Windows 11 Home, Index 2 corresponds to Windows 11 Home N, and so on, okay? So we're going to do exactly the same thing with Windows 10. Let's go directly, press the up arrow on our keyboard, and instead of reading install.wim, I want it to read install.esd now. Where did you get that from, Victor? We got it directly from where? From here, from the files we have in this section, okay? Very good. We're basically going to hit enter, and now all the versions of Windows 10 are there, all right? There we are, everything perfectly consolidated. What are we going to do? We're going to copy a second command that I'm leaving for you down below in the video description. You just have to copy and paste it, okay? All right. Right click, and now we're going to tell it directly with this command and all its parameters. Yes, using the Teams tool to merge them, okay? Where it says source image, you can see it right here. Yes, we're going to delete this part here and assign it the index number of the image you want to export. Just like that, so it removes it and exports it to obviously the entire parameter, okay? 
But before this, we're going to assign where the directory is. In this case, what did we say the directory was? Uh, you just come here, you know, copy it. Yes, right click, paste. There you go, right? Source image file colon C, ISOS alt 92. And we're going to tell it to export all the versions we want directly there using that same parameter. So let's hit enter. Again, the install, install the ESD, all right? And right where it asks which index or which one we want to export, basically, I want to export all the ones included in this build, okay? So I'm going to do home, home, all the ones it has, I'm going to assign the number. In this case, I want number one to be imported directly into our install.win ISO, all right? I'm going to make this a little bigger so we're all perfectly in sync, really well synchronized. I'm going to minimize this part. There we go, okay? Here I'm telling it to export from install.sde, the version with index one, which in this case corresponds to home and that its destination, yes, this part here, we're also going to modify, all right? We're going to modify this one for the same reason, okay? Let's delete it. And you just, you know, navigate to this specific location, then proceed to carefully copy the necessary files and subsequently paste them into the designated directory, all right? This process will lead you to the 90 second step, okay? And it's going to be located within the install.win file, which is crucial for the installation. Everything that's in SD will be moved to install.win. Once we have this pretty much set up, all nice and tidy and well written, we hit enter. Very good, friends. Once the export is finished, basically, we're going to do exactly the same with all the others. Yes, if you want to import all of them, if not just one or two, that you want to merge into that same Windows 11 ISO and have everything completely together. Basically, what we are doing is consolidating an AO or a TU. In my case, I'm going to add the seven versions we have in Windows 10 under our Windows 11. So let's do it. We're just going to basically press the up arrow key on your keyboard. I basically imported what is the first one. Now what I'm going to do is import what is from index two and so on, okay? Let's do it. All right, guys, after a good dinner and a good meal, we've pretty much closed our command prompt. As you could see, I added all the Windows 10 versions into the install.win integration of Windows 11, right? We pretty much closed this. Let's open it. And obviously our install.win has grown, right? Basically, it's going to be almost equivalent to 10 gigabytes. So when you boot this ISO, you'll need a flash drive, an eight gigabyte USB, or if you don't need a USB for installation, I'll leave a link in the video description on how to install this ISO or any version without needing to use a DVD disc or a CD in this case, because yes, you can also install it from a CD, obviously a very lightweight version or from some external bootable drive, okay? All through your local internal hard drive without needing any flash drive or USB, all right? This is how it turned out. We accept. Now we're going to need a third application, which you can find for free, okay? On the following page that I'm sharing with you, all right? Open your browser. Paste the link, okay? There it is. And we're going to click where it says download 64 bits. Here comes the free to play, family friendly part for all our friends, okay? I'm going to close this. That's it. I'm going to run it with administrator privileges. We accept, install, click next and close. That's it. Very good. Now let's close all of this, close and minimize. There it is, our application opens. We're going to select edit image, edit image, all right? There are several options that we could add here later on. Look, for example, I'm going to set this to Spanish, Spain. That's it, edit image. We will now click on the browse button the, and then directly proceed to select what's located in our local disk C drive, specifically within the ISOs folder. From this location, we are going to carefully select the Windows 10 operating system file, okay? Once that is done, we will click the open button followed by next, and then we will navigate straight into the sources folder to continue with the process. And inside sources, we're going to find the installed SD that this version has, right? Here it is, did you see? Very well. We're going to select this one and click delete and confirm by saying yes. And we're going to add the new one we already put in with all the versions, which is the one right here in this same subdirectory. OK, it's almost 10 gigabytes. Click open. That's it. Now we add it. Click next. And here we are going to name it Windows TU Universal, right? This is the official designation for this particular version or whatever you want to call it. 
Very good. Perfect. Now, without further ado, we click on create. Once this entire process is basically and thoroughly done compiling, we can simply click the exit button. And of course, we will then have our fully universal compilation ISO ready for use. Now we're basically going to test it on a machine. And as we said, we're going to try it out on our nice hypervisor. We're going to go ahead and create a machine, even one that doesn't meet any of the requirements that Windows 11 asks for. Sound good? Let's name it here, Windows Universal. All right. I'm going to set it here to my local disk. So it goes to my local disk C, UVM, where I keep my virtual environments. I'm going to set it as generation one, okay? With just about 2,048 megabytes of RAM, all right? Next. Again, select gen one, next. About 128, next. And let's proceed to load the ISO file directly from our system, shall we? In this step, we carefully select the specific Windows TU Universal.ISO file from the available options, ensuring we have the correct installation media. Once selected, we click Open to confirm our choice, then proceed to the next step to continue the setup process. And finally, click Finish to complete the initial configuration. That's it. As I said, we're going to do this on a machine that might not be officially supported, that doesn't meet the requirements. We're only going to give it two processing cores, okay? Two gigabytes of RAM. And with this, let's see if it's possible to install our universal windows that we've unified into a single TU. All right, let's get started. Now let's select Spanish, Mexico. Next, install now. I don't have a product key. And we have all versions of Windows 11 and Windows 10 without any problem all together in a single TU, no issues at all. Did you see that? Let's proceed to select one of the available options. We will then accept the selection, move to the next step, access the advanced settings, and finally proceed to the subsequent stage. That completes the initial configuration process. This entire procedure is designed to be seamless, and it's particularly beneficial because our machine does not need to meet any specific prerequisites before we begin, simplifying the setup considerably and allowing for a more flexible deployment. That's all, guys. With this, I say goodbye. You know, learn and share knowledge. I invite you, of course, to follow us on all our social media, and above all, and most importantly, as you already know, share with your family and especially share this video with a friend. It could really save their life. See you soon. Until next time.